In this image, I would like to give it a effect where I don't like having to go through all the steps all the time. I want to simplify a uh, effect and make it so it's just much more friendly by using actions. It's an effect I think I did when we talked in a previous lesson on um, blending modes, I believe. Although there's a chance it was in the one on filters. Uh, anyway, let's create one. I'm going to come in here and create a brand new action. And I'm going to call this antique color. I'm going to click record. And now here are the steps I'd like to do. First, I want to pull all the color out of this image. And I'm going to do that using an adjustment layer called black and white. Then I would like to take a copy of the original image and put it on top. So I'm going to click on the layer that's underneath to select it. And I'm going to move it. Well, I'm not going to move it. I'm going to duplicate it. So one method for duplicating a layer is to type Command J to jump it to its own layer. Control J in Windows. So I'll type that. And then I'm going to move that layer up in my layer stack. Then I want to apply the color that is found in that layer to the black and white version of the picture that's underneath using a blending mode that's called overlay. And that will give it this kind of antique look. But then the problem is there's not enough shadow detail. The dark portions of the image became much darker. So I want to do something to bring the original shadow detail back. Well, I would like to hide the dark portion of the image from both of these layers that are here, both the black and white and this uh, layer that's on top. So I'm going to select both layers. I'll hold down the shift key and click on that layer. And then I'm going to put it in a folder. Because when I put it on a folder, anything I do to the folder itself will apply to all the layers that are contained within. So I'll come in here and I will then choose, oh, not there, FX, blending options. And we had a lesson about advanced layers as part of uh, the complete guide, and it showed you that you could hide the dark portions of a layer by pulling in a slider, either one of these in this case, and split this apart to make it blend in. Just trying to bring back some of the darker areas. Then to finish it off, I might as well name that folder. So I'll just double click on its name, and I'm going to call this Antique Color. And now I'm done recording my action, so let's hit the stop button. And we might as well just test it. Let's revert the image to its original. Click on the name of our action, hit play, and see if it works. It certainly looks to. But then let's analyze our action and decide if it's going to be universally applicable. Well, let's see what we did. We ended up making an adjustment layer. It's a black and white adjustment. That should be universal. Oh, here we go. Look at what it says. It selects a layer and it's called background. And that's because when we started this action, the only thing the document contained was a layer called background. Well, what if in the future when I attempt to apply this, there is no layer called background? Like if I revert this image right now, in my layers panel, I double click and I call this car. Now it doesn't have a layer called background, so if I grab that action and I hit play, it's going to give me an error. And it just says, sorry, you told me to do something. That, that command simply is not available. So I'm going to stop. Well, we'll revert this image again because some of it has applied. And so let's figure out how can we change what layer is active without it recording the name of the layer as part of it. Well, the problem is our steps in our action ended up going in here and creating a black and white adjustment layer. And then I moved my mouse right down here to the layer below and I clicked on it. Well, anytime you click on a layer like that, it's going to record the name of the layer. So let's figure out if there's a way to make the layer that's underneath active without actually having to click on it. And there is. Yeah, there's a keyboard shortcut for it. If you look right now, I'm using my keyboard to switch between these two layers. The keyboard shortcut that I'm using to do so is holding down the Option key. That's Alt in Windows. 
and then using the square bracket keys on my keyboard that's right above my return key. And one of those bracket keys, the left one, will end up getting the layer above, and the opposite one will grab the layer that's below. So let's see if I can replace one of the steps in my action. Let's take a look here, and right here it made an adjustment layer, and right there is where it switched layers, and it has the name of the layer. So I'm gonna click on that particular step, and I'll make sure over here in my layers panel, it looks like it did at the time the action was being made at this stage. This was right when I was about to click on the layer below. I'll hit the record button, and then I'm gonna hold down option and hit the left bracket key. That switched which layer is active, I'll hit the stop button so we no longer record any more steps, and let's see what we ended up with. It now says select backward layer. I wish it said select underlying layer, because backward doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, that will do it without having the name of the layer in the action. So let's throw that step, previous step away. All right, the layer via copy can work with any layer. Move current layer, as long as it says current layer and doesn't say move background layer, then that should be fine. It says to layer three. Um, not sure there, but I'm assuming that means a certain number of layers above. Uh, we'll have to test it to be sure there. But there is a keyboard shortcut for moving a layer. Let me show you what it is. Before I showed you, I'll have to unlock this layer to be able to move it though. I mentioned that option in those bracket keys changes which layer is active. If instead you do command in the same bracket keys, it would move a layer up and down. So one way I could have moved a layer instead of using my mouse, clicking on it and dragging it up, is to hold down the command key, control and windows, and then use those square brackets to either move it up or down. I did that too many times with the keyboard. I was trying to get back to the same stage we had before. All right, so I'm assuming this will work. It says move to layer three. I think that means layer position three, like the third slot in the layers panel, but we'll find out when we test the action. The problem that it could be with that is what if the document had four layers to begin with? Then there's a chance that might not work. Okay, set current layer to overlay. As long as it says current layer and not background layer, we're fine. Then here it says select the layer called black and white one. Well, what if there was already a black and white adjustment layer contained within the document? What this is doing is switching to this layer. And so that's something where if it was switching layers is something that it might not work. And so we could record that difference so it would not contain the name of the layer that's in there. I'd have to apply part of this action to get to that point, though, to figure out exactly what layer was uh, active. You can do that. Uh, I'm going to revert this image to the original, and I want it just to play down to right before that step. You see these little checkboxes on the left? That means should I play or should I skip this step? I could tell it to skip those last few steps. Then if I just play this action, it's going to end right there. There, it's, it's made it through. So the topmost layer was active. Oh, I know what I needed to do at that point. What I was doing was selecting both of those layers so I could put them in a folder. Well, just in case that layer wasn't called uh, black and white one, what I can do is that same keyboard shortcut we use to switch layers, which is option and the bracket keys, just add the shift key to it. And that means don't switch layers, but add the layer that was underneath. Uh, and therefore that's what could be used. So let's replace that step. I'll click on the name of the step, I'll hit the record button, and I'm gonna do shift, option, left bracket. That would be shift, alt, left bracket, and windows. And then I'll hit stop. Let's see what the difference is. So here it was saying to select the name of a very specific layer, which might not always be in a document, and to add it. Down here, it's saying select the backward layer, meaning the layer underneath, and add it. So that's more universally applicable. Okay, then let's see, make group. Uh, current layer, we're gonna call it group one. That's fine. Um, we could have named it, but that's, that's, that'll still work. Set the layer. Uh, these are the blending sliders. 
and then set the layer to a name of antique color. That looks fine. Let's turn those check boxes back on so it will apply those steps and let's test our action. Make sure we didn't break it in some way. Yeah, it ended up with that perfect. Now we could improve on this because this is the process I usually go through, but um, the best thing to do with that duplicate layer is to blur it. And so what I could have done is when it was created, uh, I could have turned it into a smart object. And then at some point I can blur it because then it gives it more of an antique look. But we already have our action made. So sometimes you need to modify actions to improve them. And so let's just see if we can figure out at what point in here uh, were various things created and moved. Well, here's where we moved current layer to position three, which I think meant up here. And I think that right after that, that would be selected and I could turn it into a smart object. So right at this point, that's where I want to deviate. And uh, I'm going to come down here and just hit record. And what I really want to do is go layer. Where is smart objects? Convert to smart object. And so that's going to end up being a smart object. I think I want to wait until it's already changed its blending mode. And that was the next step, I believe. So let's hit stop. And let's see here. Yep, change it to overlay. And then right after it gets changed to overlay mode is when I want to blur it. Because when it's already in overlay mode, I'm going to get a preview. And in fact, I think it's going to be even better if we do it after we make a group and we add the blending sliders. So it's down here at the very end. I can see what the end step is. Okay, we're just naming it. Might as well just add it at the very end of our action. So at the end of our action, what I'm going to do is it will have just named this um, group at the top. So most likely that will be selected. I'm going to hit record. I want it to select the layer that's underneath, and I'll do that using my keyboard, option left bracket. And then I'm going to go to the filter menu and choose blur. I'll click OK, and then we'll stop the action. And the very last thing I want to do is be able to choose the amount of blurring applied. So I turn on that. So you notice that when I'm going through and trying to add functionality to an action after it's been created, it's much harder to think about it. It's much easier to get confused about what you're doing. So for me, it's best to think through an action and practice the steps first. And when you're done practicing the steps, just ask yourself, is there any more intelligent way I would want this done? Because it only takes time to create the action once. You might as well spend the time to make a really good action. And that means what should these layers be named? You might want to think about that so you don't just end up with default names. And is there any extra functionality that might be useful to incorporate? If so, work it right into the action. And if you do it the first time, it's much easier to think of than having to go back and modify. So now I'm going to come over here and revert, and let's just double check that the modifications I made work. So it just ends up with this blur screen, and I can bring it down to not blur at all, or bring it up to get that soft, uh, kind of glowy feel, and it worked fine. It's best to try it on a couple different documents. But uh, I think we're doing all right here.